All right, guys, here's where we're currently at with the engine bay. I already got most of this side done. Uh, I had messed around with a little bit on what tools I was using and what worked best with me. What I found was if you get these kind of abrasive uh, wheels, they take the paint off to the metal really, really quickly. Uh, and it works the easiest, honestly, because the biggest thing I was having trouble with was finding what the easiest way was to get all these tight corners and kind of crazy ways. So if you get one of these kits, it comes with different sections of these abrasive uh, wire wheels. And you can get, uh, you know, this big one works really well for covering the most areas as fast as possible, but it's not going to get in the tighter corners. That's when you switch over to a smaller one. Uh, and so I was actually able to get, as you can see, pretty much all right along here, right down to bare metal. Because obviously the biggest thing you want is whenever you're uh, going to be welding this, the metal needs to be down uh, and as pure as possible. We don't want any contaminants in the metal, uh, which obviously is going to be paint, rust, you name it. There's obviously going to be a little bit of rust around this area where the battery box used to be uh, that I'm going to have to kind of fight with. I'm going to try and get as much as I can, but overall, the vast majority of the engine bay is very, very rust-free. Top of the shock tower I'm also going to be doing as well. You can see I got that all the way down to the metal. And then right here, this was really nice because there was a lot of uh, seam sealer, uh, similar to what you see kind of down here in this corner. There's a lot of seam sealer right here. Uh, and you definitely don't want that when you're welding because that's also a contaminant that's going to be in your welds. So the, the wire wheels actually took that off immediately and made it really well. Down here, this is probably the worst of the rust in the engine bay. Not too terribly worried about it because it's not completely structural. I'm considering possibly cutting a lot of this out and then just making this flat instead of having this lip here. And just making a bracket for the spring for the hood latch. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I mean, there's really not a whole lot else uh, that we really need to do. Uh, I just need to finish running some of these seams. As you can see, this... Uh, this brake line here was kind of in the way, so I'm probably going to have to get this area by hand. Uh, same thing with this over here. But it was pretty easy. Essentially, all I have to do is copy all this over to the other side. I'm still going to have to take out a couple of uh, uh, equipment and everything. I'm going to have a little bit of trouble working around the brake booster and, and more of the brake lines on this side since there's, there's more stuff. I'm going to be taking the steering rack uh, out, so that way I don't have to work with that or deal with that at all. Uh, I'm also going to take these brackets right here that held the front bumper on completely off so I can get all the way down uh, behind them as well because uh, I want to have this chassis as strong as possible. So I'm trying to stitch weld at every possible seam that I can, which is obviously going to take some time, but it has some payoffs. So that's that's basically it, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move the camera angle so that way you can see this side a little bit more. And we're going to keep working. As soon as I'm done getting this down to basically how this side is, I'm just going to wipe it off, get it nice and clean, and I'm going to move to stitch welding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, I'm going to measure it out, and about every single inch, I'm going to do about an inch long bead all the way down. I'm probably going to try TIG welding this at first, just because this metal is so thin. Um, I'm going to need the lowest amperage that I can, and with a lot of flux core and MIG welders, it's really hard to get those down to a really low amperage without burning the metal. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get my TIG out uh, and just try TIGging a lot of this and seeing what I can get with it. And if I can get a good enough bead, I'll just keep using that. If not, I may try the flux core as well, uh, just to see what happens. And we'll kind of just go from there. So we got most of the engine bay prepped for stitch welding. You can see we already got the, the passenger side of the car for the most part done. Uh, we went ahead and did the rest of the entire car. Uh, one of the tips I'll give to you guys, the best thing to do is cut up a one inch square piece of uh, cardboard. And then what you do is you move that cardboard around the seam and you can mark it on the edges and you get pretty precise marking. So that way you kind of give yourself some guide marks. Obviously you don't want to be putting the mark right across where you're going to be welding because that uh, marker will cause contamination in your weld if you actually have the, uh, the ink there. So I pretty much have the whole passenger side for the most part ready, get the steering column out of the way. I got this whole upper area marked, ready to go. Uh, same thing with here. This is actually done way before we even started this video series. I did this a long time ago back in North Carolina, but I'm gonna come here and touch this up right here. Same thing on the other side there. So that way we can go ahead and get this whole front of the car done. And then once that's done, we're gonna finish cleaning up the entire engine bay. And then we're gonna be painting it a nice special color. Uh, make sure to go ahead right now, comment below, let me know what color you think we're going to be painting the engine bay, and we'll see if you're correct.
of the engine bay completely freaking done. We got this whole side stitch welded all the way. I ended up pulling out the whole brake master cylinder and brake booster so that way I could make room to get behind the clutch uh, master cylinder as well. So we also got all the way along there completely done. We got the sides and everything completely done. I got this little area right here done on both sides. And while I was doing that, Joy actually finished the back end. I don't know if you guys paid attention to realize, but we didn't actually paint the back end in our painting video, but she went ahead and knocked that out for us, got that all done. So now we're gonna go ahead and clean up most of the engine bay, start doing a lot of the prep on it, and then we're gonna go ahead and paint it. We just got back from the store, got all the paint, we're on a full stomach, let's do this. Alright guys, here is the finished product. I am so excited. This engine bay came out a lot better than I thought it would. Um, initially, the whole reason that I decided to go red is we're going to be running red on our wheels uh, when the project's ultimately finished. And so I thought it'd be really cool to have the engine bay and the wheels kind of matching and then the rest of the body be, uh, you know, the dark metallic gray that we're going to be going with. Uh, but I'm really, really happy with how this came out. Stitch welds, uh, I'm actually really happy with those. A lot of them I got almost perfectly. Uh, you know, there was a few that I yeah, didn't have a proper ground or there might have been content some contamination, so it didn't have the, the strongest weld. Um, but for, I want to say about 95% of the welds that I did, I think they came out phenomenal, a lot better than I expected considering I was using a flux core welder, which I really was hesitant to do, but actually got some really good results uh, after playing with the settings and everything. I mean, that's really the biggest thing I can give you guys when it comes to welding. Just play with your welder, get some practice material, try and figure out the best settings for what you're welding. Uh, make sure you have a good proper ground, metal's nice and clean, that there's no contaminants or anything in it. That, that way you'll get a really good strong bond in the weld. Uh, and you definitely want that bond, obviously, that's the whole reason you're welding. Um, but I went ahead and I threw the flake in here. The flake's probably not going to be on the wheels, but I really thought the flake was going to look good, you know, in the engine bay. And I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, they actually didn't have like a red flake, which is actually okay. They had like a purple flake. And I think it offsets the red just right. And it makes it look really, really good. It's kind of got like silver, purple, and gold all in that flake. And it looks a lot better than I thought it would. I mean, I'm, I'm just really, really happy with, with how it came out and how it looks. Obviously, uh, there's some things we left in the engine bay <laughs> that got painted, like my clutch master cylinder over there. Uh, obviously, that's going to get replaced. Uh, same thing with like all my heater lines and anything going uh, to the central a uh, AC system and all that. Yeah, that's all getting pulled out. So I wasn't worried about taping that up or anything. Uh, brake lines are all getting replaced. I'm redoing the whole brake system. So I really wasn't too worried about a lot of this stuff. That's why you didn't see me tape it. Obviously, my shock towers and bolts for all that are all going to get replaced. So there was no reason for me to sit there and just prep it by, by taping it or anything. Obviously, I taped inside this big hole here. I tried to get a piece of tape in there. It didn't work out too well. Not too worried about that. That was just sound deadening behind that. But ultimately, we're going to be pulling uh, the, the, you know, the central... AC and heater system out uh, and then we're gonna weld up plates for that that way we can cover those holes up I need to fix that one hole right there so I'll have to come back and do that uh, and that's a little bit of a rust hole but that's literally the only rust in the end bay besides under the uh, battery box so other than that guys I'm really really happy with how it came out make sure to hit that like button subscribe come back for more next episode that'll be coming out and we might be putting a 2J in there make sure to stay tuned <laughs>